Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm gonna to be discussing setting up scenes with your stamps. I'll use the stamps from the Snowflake Gro Grove release from Purple Onion Designs. They're by Stacy Yakula. And I'm not gonna talk through the coloring as much as I am through how and why I set the scenes up as I did, because that's one of the questions I get an awful lot. So I hope that's okay, that you just watch the coloring and I'll talk through how this actually came to be. So this is actually made of three different stamps. The little bunny is called Fawn. The tree house in, includes all those parts. It includes the little path coming out, it includes the little toadstools and everything. And then the sentiment is in a separate stamp. And what I did with this one, I wanted to stretch that tree out taller. Because what I had done was stamped it onto some tracing paper first. And it's easy to just pop them on there trim them out or even rip them out very easily and start moving things around until they start working on a card sized piece. And what I found with this one, I wanted it to be a little bit taller and I also was struggling with where to put the sentiment on this one. Because the sentiments in these, since they're on red rubber, they're a little harder to break up. And I didn't want to always be cutting every single one of these. So I thought, let me see what I can do. And I realized I could stamp that one twice. I stamped the bottom part of it and masked out that line. And then I moved it up and stamped the top part and I drew the two horizontal lines on with a pen and then stamped my sentiment in the middle. This did take a lot of masking and preparation and planning. So that's why you're seeing the coloring part and not the entire crazy masking part because that includes a lot of trial and error, which is why I don't usually include a lot of that in my videos because it would just be crazy long. So. I, I just figured it might help to talk through that. So the first thing that was stamped on was the bunny rabbit and then the bottom part of the house with that mask and then the top part of the mask and then the sentiment. And I used a misty, which is a stamping tool to line everything up. So I had each part ready and I had them all, I, I used my tracing paper in the misty to get everything set up just right so that I could just go bang, bang, bang through it all once I got it set up. But it does take a while to set it up so if you want to do scenes, that's something to consider is having some sort of a placement tool that's going to help you when you lay out your scenes. And this one, I love the little house. I mean, I just think the little, little house is adorable. You could even take off some of the snowy elements and just if you took a little bit of a, a wipe or something and wiped off that snow on the right bottom side of the tree and take a little bit off of that, those two little toadstools that have the snow on them, then you could make this into a summer treehouse as well and just draw those lines back in because they're very simple shapes to draw back in and you can create something else with the same stamps and not have them be just holiday stamps. So for my coloring, I'm it's really basic stuff. I'm not getting crazy with it. I did put extra shading underneath the sentiment to really make that pop because I wanted this to be a you know pretty simple straight up one layer card. And then I added little green and red elements. And yes, I am going to color that other yellow little uh, little shutter on the window. I did miss that in the earlier coloring of that. So I know that drives some of you guys nuts. The little bunny, I'm just going to color him with the warm grays and pull a little bit of lighter color in. And I'm allowing a little white outline around the outside, which just adds a little difference to the image rather than just being colored all the way to the edge. But you could also do it that way. And then I took a couple of different grays and made some shading on the different rocks in the little path. Super easy to, to just do that. I didn't even worry about blending them. I just let them be. A little pink in the ears, a little blue in the glass. And then of course, my Signo pen is one of those things that goes with me everywhere <laughs> every time I make a card. So I added some little uh, Signo pen dots and then I had it out. So I went, wait a minute, why don't I add more snow? So I've added snow in the places where snow would catch. So if you've got anything that has windows, figure out the places where the snow would sit if it just fell from the sky and landed. For the card itself, I've popped that panel and I put a little strip of red under the left-hand side just to make it a little different. And the card is cut to slightly smaller to accommodate exactly the size that I wanted. And you can see lots of glossy accents was added as well, which is, one of those things that I just seem to put on all my cards anyway lately. So let's move on to another card. This one has Market Stand, which is the little, little building that I'm coloring. It has the Sweet Shop set, 
which is all of the little candies and little jars and things that you can put into the market and as well as the little the little dangly bobs the little decorations and then ash is the little raccoon so ash is really cute i love raccoons and foxes all these little animals and stuff and stacy does a great job on them so on this one again i tried to figure out i put them on tracing paper and laid them all out these are on red rubber so they are a little more challenging to figure out how to do it it's a little easier to see things with clear stamps so that's why I do them on the tracing paper and lay them out so that I can see where, where all those pieces are going to fall. And then with the Misty, I can easily just line them up and, you know, test it out, make sure it all works right. So that when I get done to, with my final one, all I had to do is first stamp the little raccoon. He was first because he's in the very front. And I stamped him at the same time as I did the little candy cane bucket that I'm coloring right there. And next I did the, the market stand. And then I added the little pieces inside, masking those out so that the fruitcake in the back was behind the other two, the fruitcake and the little jar. And it is a little bit of detailed masking. It's just one of those things that you have to be willing to do if you wanna put together scenes like this. But you could also instead just fussy cut out those pieces and add them in after you get it all colored. That's probably for most people gonna be a whole lot easier. On this one, I've just added, I'm using Kind of a muted red on the roof. I used a bunch of browns for the market stand itself and then lots of red and green little pieces that I was adding just for the decorations. A little bit of snow down below of course and then I'm going to use um, some grays on my little raccoon in just a moment here but the snow is one of those things in the winter time that you can easily just get away with using a little bit of blue or gray. A gray will work too. There's lots of little purples, light kinds of colors like that that you can use. Now I Google pictures of raccoons every time I do raccoons because I can never remember if the mask is the dark part or the head is the dark part. And I always realize when I see a picture of a raccoon that the raccoons are actually, they have the dark mask and they have a medium kind of gray head, but they have a little white line that's kind of their little eyebrows above that mask. And that's one of the things that I think makes raccoons distinctive when you see them colored when you see them colored right and they're you're like oh that's what it should look like and they even have even even though the stamp is drawn with just that little piece there is a little spot in the middle that comes up from the mask and usually goes a, a little dark spot that reaches up onto the top of the head and so I'm just kind of adding some darker grays in order to recreate that a little bit when I get done I'm going to put some glossy accents on the eyes so they pop out more and I also had that dead space in the upper right hand corner. I tried red hearts up there and they were too much. It felt like I was filling in space. So I punched white hearts instead and used glossy accents on them and added glossy accents, snow, and of course elements all over it to add lots of shine to it. So let's look at one more card and talk through this one. This one has the bridge. I love this little bridge and you could use this any time of year as well. It's got the little snowman called Snow, and then of course the sentiment. This one I did have to cut apart, and I stamped it in a couple pieces because since it's red rubber, you can't snug those words up underneath of each other that way. But what I also did was put them on a block, and I got them all to stamp exactly the way I wanted, to, wanted them to on a block, and then I'm just gonna leave the block. I have a whole bunch of extra blocks sitting around that I don't use all the time, and I'm gonna leave that sentiment there since I got it lined up and then I can use it on other cards without having to worry about it. So that one didn't go in the Misty because it's on an actual separate acrylic block. Now for the coloring on the bridge, I knew I was gonna make a round card out of this. So I'm not really too worried about the stuff on the left and right, but I wanted to give the bridge this kind of a look of old bridge. I don't know if you've seen those bridges that have a lot of different colors in them. So I wanted to add a lot of different reds and browns and grays and kind of dull reds. So I'm just not using anything bright on there because it's going to be in the moonlight. The moon is behind it. And I drew that just using a, a circle template. I had a, a piece from a die that I had cut out that was sitting on my desk. And I thought, oh, that would work well for a moon. It was just the right size. And then I added my coloring to the hat. I could have added the shading first. I thought about it later. It probably would have made more sense to add the shading first rather than later, but you know, live and learn, don't we? And you'll see what I mean when I get to the shading of that part. So I've added a couple little 
colors for his arms and things. And, you know, this is really simple coloring because there's not a whole lot left to it. Not a lot of, uh, lot of coloring to it. But on the hat, since he's being lit from the back and from the, that upper right side, I just put my grays along the hat and then colored right over top of the red. You could do that first and then add the red on top and you wouldn't get uh, the smooshing that I got a little bit. But I used warm grays on the fabric and cool grays on him. So that added a little bit of difference between the two. And then I started coloring the sky. And the sky just started working its way around. And I was debating what to do with the top of the bridge. So for the time being, I decided to leave it that really light tan color because I wanted to have a real strong contrast right in there with where the, the sky was gonna stop against the bridge because it's gonna make the card have a little more pop when I have that strong, really, really strong contrast. So I was drawing myself in a little horizon as well, and I'm just adding the, the I think it's a B99 that I was using here, adding lots and lots of marker, and then I went went around it again. I've done a couple of moons like this, so I'll link you in the uh, description down below to a couple other moon videos. And I'm using lighter blues, the B93, B95, B97, out to the B99, and just using rounded strokes around it to create that illusion that the moon is radiating out that light. And so when I get out to the dark color, then I started bringing the lighters back in, the, work my way back to the B97, B95, B93, all the way back to the, the center. Cause that's gonna really draw the attention to the moon and allow it to just kind of be the, the middle part there. If your, your sky ends up being really not, not smooth, you can always just take some uh, colorless blender in a mist, mini mister and spritz it a little bit and you'll get some texture added to it that will smooth out a lot of that stuff. But what I decided to do, and I knew I was gonna cut off a lot of that extra, so I didn't really worry about it. You'll see when it gets cut off later. I wanted to add a little sprinkle of moon dust or pixie dust coming from the sentiment, curling around to the right, and then over behind the snowman and then down in front of him. So I just kind of made these dots in a lighter blue that's kind of acting like a colorless blender. And then I tried the colorless blender and I wasn't getting exactly what I wanted through this. I was really hoping it was gonna work better. Maybe I was working too fast, or it could have also been that my colorless blender needed to be refilled. So this works better when you have a really strong colorless blender marker with a lot of juice in it. But I decided I'm just gonna go for the Signo pen because that's gonna work and it's gonna be tinier detail anyway. So I'm just adding little teeny tiny dots very irregularly. If you add them to, in too much of an orderly fashion, then it's gonna end up looking a little weird. So you wanna have it a little looser. But on a card like this, that's gonna add movement to it because I have a very static central moon, a very static central bridge. I have the, the little guy, the little snowman is off to the side. So it adds a little bit of off kilterness to the layout, but then that swirl ties it all together. And then I, all I had to do is die cut it. And I did some faux stitching around the edge. And you can see that if I had centered everything or if I had everything off kilter in a different way, it would have added a whole different element to the card, but I think I like how this one came out. So here are some videos for you. The one on the left has one of the moons in it that you can go and watch how I color that one. And on the right is a little idea on how to color some fur on little white bears. And I guess that's about it for today. Go check out the new release over at Purple Onion. Link in the description, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.